Ladies and gentlemen, TV superstar and the strong man of the Butterfinger Defense League, Lou Ferrigno! Hey, Lou. Great body. Thanks. It took a lot of work. This is me. People will always lay a finger on my Butterfinger. But all that changed once I learned how to whip one! Using Lou's patented Butterfinger Uber Forceful Flexing Technique, you'll buff up and keep your sweet stash safe. Let's watch Lou's buff training in action. The key is to squeeze! Yeah! If you want to make sure nobody lays a finger on your Butterfinger, get my video today! But that's not all. If you order in the next five minutes, we'll throw in a bonus video. Cat Blast, pumping up your pets. Watch Lou take this cat from fluff to buff. Come on, Mr. Fluff. Let's hear it for this Hulk Dub Kitty. Yeah. Nobody's going to lay a finger on our Butterfinger. Yeah. Learn how to protect your bar today. Go to ButterfingerDefenseLeague.com. This message brought to you by the Butterfinger Defense League, making sure that nobody's gonna lay a finger on your Butterfinger. No animals or thieves were hurt during the making of this video.
next, the next inductee is somebody I know since I was a kid because we're both, both, both from Brooklyn. Uh, Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno. Louis has got so many talents in so many different areas. I mean, we all knew him as the Hulk or a bodybuilder, but Louis is in so many diverse areas. In, in Hollywood as an actor, he was even involved with the police as a um, honorary policeman. Um, he won the IFBB Mr. America title, two consecutive IFBB Mr. Universe titles, top placings at the Olympia, and he was with Arnold in the movie Pumping Iron, which really introduced the whole world to bodybuilding. I mean, that was really, what you guys did back then was with Butler was so landmark. I mean, it changed the whole landscape. I remember watching it as a kid. It was like, wow, I want to be like these guys. But I knew you from Brooklyn, but I said, I'm never going to be like Lou. And forget it, nobody could ever be like Arnold because there's only one Arnold. So uh, you, it was so many groundworking things. Even Lou even went out to play. He was playing some heavy league Canadian football as well in between there. He even competed in the world's strongman, strongest man competition in 77 with a high placing. But the thing that really set him apart and what really gave him this world recognition is everybody, you say Louis Ferrigno, they go the Hulk. And even though there have been other Hulks after, there's really one real Hulk in our mind, and that's Lou Ferrigno. Let's give Louis a big round of applause for doing that. Because not, not only the Hulk, he went on to a whole series of TV shows and movies and so many other areas in the Hollywood arena. And Lou, this is the best I've seen you look in years. You look great, man. Thank you. Congratulations. I'll pay you later. OK. <laughs> OK, Lou, come on up. How are you, everyone? Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm happy to be here because I just finished an action film in San Francisco. I'm glad to be, uh, be able to attend this uh, great sports festival. The first person I want to thank is Fairfax Hackley. And I hope he smiled. Thank God. And Bob Goldman for thinking of me, nominating me, bringing me here. Thank you very much. You know, my hearing may be not be as perfect as yours, but in my life, I've learned to maximize what I've done in my life, my personal power, because as a kid, many years ago, I had to overcome adversity. Boy, 60-some years ago, this little kid couldn't speak, hard of hearing, and had a severe speech impediment, and you know what saved my life? Bodybuilding. When I was a kid, I was so obsessed with power. I used to read comic books like The Incredible Hulk, Superman, Spider-Man, but you know, children do not have the psychological defense to defend themselves. So I would ridicule the kid used to call me names like Deaf Lou, Deaf Mute. So I would think about trying to be strong and powerful because I had a love and hate relationship with my father. So I'll never forget one time I used to trade a lot of comic books. So my dad took me to a comic book store and I see this magazine and there's a guy in the cover, Dave Dray Draper, doing a chest pose. And I'm saying to myself, my God. This is Mr. Universe, because at the time, I used to watch TV, I used to watch Mr. Universe, Mr. America, but I never thought there'd be a competition like Mr. Universe. I took the magazine home, I read it from page to page, I probably took all the print off, I learned everything I can about bodybuilding. So as a kid, you know, being very poor, I couldn't uh, buy barbells, so what I've done, I used to take cement pills, I went to a junkyard, I had six cement pills, and I would fill maybe one-third halfway and full and thick and broom thick, I made my own barbell. I'll never forget when I first lifted it, I said to myself, this feels so good. I like this so much. Because back then, people were saying, lose lifting weights. All he's done is think about barbells and dumbbells. You know, what about his education? He's never going to make a living. But that's all he talks about. So I realized that this is my passion. Like every one of you, have a passion. Embrace it. If I didn't embrace uh, this passion, I wouldn't be what I am today because of all the negativity. 
I mean, look where it was taking me. I mean, 50 some years ago, you know, like being here, it's like being home. I'm here with all my great friends, my peers, all the champions. It couldn't be a better day. So fast forward many years later, and I got to the point that all my dreams came true because bodybuilding taught me the discipline, the determination to be successful. And I just kept competing, kept winning competition. And eventually uh, got to the point that uh, I'd done movies on television. I came back to competition in 1992 to compete after 17 year layoff because well, after pumping iron, I felt to me it was like unfinished business because I only trained like 10 weeks for the competition. And I remember competing again at the age of 42. I got my body weight up to 330 and I just wanted to place high in the competition because I love competing with myself. And I was able to place high and come second in the, the match at the Olympia because to me it was not about the winning. It was about the satisfaction of me getting out to win. But in life, I have to tell you, you know what my greatest achievement is? Being married for 37 years to a beautiful woman having three great kids. <laughs> that's the best achievement I've ever done. So, you know, in life, I want to give back. So 10 years ago, I went through the uh, Sheriff's Academy. I became a certified deputy sheriff. You know, of course, my father was the uh, lieutenant. That might be the only thing he would be proud of me doing today. So during all that giving back, I still have this passion. I just love bodybuilding. So one day, my son came to me. He said, with a friend of his named Chris Minnett, he said, why not have a competition called the Ferrigno Legacy? I said, OK, I can't run the competition myself. So we united and we formed the court, the Ferrigno Legacy. We have now the best and the biggest show on the West Coast. This year, we're taking over the Palm Springs Convention Center, and we're going to have three to 400 boots. And I have a lot of support and respect for you know, the Arnold Sports Festival because they get to support each other. And to me, that's my passion now. I was thinking of something before I leave the stage. I have a funny story to tell you. A long time ago, you talk about determination. I was 21, I was training for the Mr. Universe competition. I needed to get a suntan. And at that time, I was driving a green Volkswagen. People thought I took the front seat out, sat in the back seat. I'm like 280 pounds. So I'm driving down to the beach, it was like Sheephead Bay. I'm driving around, I can't find a parking spot. And I'm looking at the watch, I got, you know, it's like 12, 1 o'clock, I need to get a suntan. I'm driving around, I see a, a small car, like a Datsun B210. So I'm looking around, nobody's around. So I park my car, I go in front of this car, I lift it like a foot in the air towards the middle of the street. And then I lift the back of the car to eventually the car was in the middle of the street. And then I took my Volkswagen and just pushed it right in the spot. <laughs> and then I see some guy, a rabbi with hair, down the cheek, coming screaming at me, top of his lungs, screaming, foam coming out of his mouth. Then I see a police car coming around. And I'm saying to myself, I'm screwed. So the cop gets out of the car. He sees me and these little rabbi screaming at me. And the guy ended up getting a ticket for double parking. <laughs> he got a second ticket for assaulting a police officer. And the third one for disturbing the peace. Guess what? I got my suntan. <laughs> Every one of you, embrace your passion. I don't care what it is. Love yourself, respect yourself, help each other, just be nice, and thank you so much for coming and myself being here. I God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. And really, this is what it's all about, and this is what's so important. You see, each of these world champion, world class people have stories to tell about the people they mentored, uh, rabbis that they disoriented, and, uh, and, and, but all of these people have amazing life journeys that have changed the lives of so many others.